imitating God's justice and righteousness. Kingdom Pattern Micah 6 verse 8 He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you. But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Living by God's standard of righteousness. God expects us to live in agreement with his righteous standards of right and wrong. Whenever we conform to God's standards of righteousness, it confirms that we actively pursuing justice and righteousness. The word of God exhorts us to learn to do good, search for justice, and seek righteousness. Read Zephaniah 2 verse 3, Ephesians 4 verse 24, Isaiah 1 verse 17. Learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. When we seek true righteousness and justice, we will reject anything that violates what is holy, such as all forms of violence, uncleanness, and immorality. Psalm 11 verse 5 The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence his soul hates. Ephesians 5 verse 3 to 5 But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Treating others justly. We can apply justice, by treating other people the way that God treats us. When God find error with us, he lovingly corrects us. We should not be quick in judging others by criticizing their shortcomings, and questioning their motives. Read Psalm 103 verse 8 to 10. Psalm 130 verse 3. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? We will definitely not be quick to judge others in private matters, or matters that are of minor importance, if we comprehend the merciful nature of God's justice. Matthew 7 verse 1. Judge not, that you be not judged. Luke 6 verse 37. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. The reason we cannot judge others is that our authority is limited, and the only one who is a lawgiver and judge, is the Almighty God. Since judgment belongs to God, if we then sit in judgment over others, then we are taking God's place. Read Romans 14 verse 1 to 4. James 4 verse 12. There is one lawgiver, who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? We can easily render unfair judgments because of our sinful nature, and our judgment could be motivated by our attitudes and motives, such as prejudice, pride, jealousy, and our self-righteousness. All these can distort the manner that we perceive fellow humans. Considering all our limitations, we should abstain from being quick to find fault with others. But we should imitate God by looking for the good in our fellow humans, rather than focusing on their shortcomings. Zechariah 7 verse 9 Thus says the Lord of hosts, Execute true justice, show mercy, and compassion everyone to his brother. Imitate God's mercy and forgiveness. When others have wronged us and they need our forgiveness, we should imitate God, in allowing mercy to prevail over judgment. We should imitate God in showing mercy, and not be like the scribes and Pharisees who applied God's law in a wrong way, making it look unreasonable. Because the Pharisees did not understand the meaning of the law, believing that they were better than others. Just like Jesus Christ, we his disciples should understand the motive behind God's law, and what each of his commandment revealed about God's character. Matthew 23 verse 23 Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done, without leaving the others undone. Hosea 6 verse 6 For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Matthew 9 verse 13 
but go and learn what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. God's mercy and the cities of refuge. The six cities of refuge were deliberately arranged by God, so that they are easy to get to, and God instructed the Israelites to make sure that the roads leading to the cities were kept in good condition. Read Numbers 36 verse 11 to 14. Deuteronomy 19 verse 3. You shall prepare roads for yourself, and divide into three parts the territory of your land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, that any manslayer may flee there. God did this so that any Israelite who accidentally killed someone, may receive mercy, and would not have to flee to a foreign land for protection, where he may fall into temptation to worship false gods. God is a merciful judge, for he is rich in mercy. Ephesians 2 verse 4 But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. The Attitude of the Pharisees The Pharisees were unwilling to show mercy to those who had wronged them, in that they refused to forgive anyone who had committed the same offense more than three times. Because they considered themselves better and more righteous than others, hence others do not deserve mercy. Jesus Christ pointed out how wrong that attitude was, by using the analogy of a Pharisee that was praying next to a tax collector. Read Luke 18 verse 9 to 14. We should imitate God's mercy, by making it easy for others who has wronged us to ask us for forgiveness. And show eagerness to make peace with those who have offended us. Luke 17 verse 3 to 4. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Colossians 3 verse 13. Bearing with one another, and forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. As disciples of Christ, we must not be like the Pharisees who believed they were superior to others, but we should humble ourselves and consider others to be higher than us, and forgive them freely. Philippians 2 verse 3 Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 8 to 9 The end of a thing is better than its beginning, the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. As Christians, we imitate God's mercy by showing compassion to others, and showing willingness to forgive others when they offend us. In order for us to be forgiving, we must be humble and never view ourselves as holier than others. Mercy is more important to God. Jeremiah 9 verse 24 But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these I delight, says the Lord. As Christians, we should be interested in knowing the way God exercises justice and righteousness, hence we should study the scripture to know his ways of justice and righteousness, and we should then imitate those qualities. Romans 15 verse 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We must comply to God's moral standards, for his standards are just and righteous, we must live in harmony with others and show mercy, exercise justice, and righteousness. Isaiah 1 verse 17 Learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. 1 Timothy 6 verse 11 But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. The Good News The Gospel in a Nutshell Human inherited sin and sinful nature as a result of the sinful disobedience of the first human, Adam and Eve, and the punishment for sin is death, which means separation from God, the source of life. Romans 3:23 We cannot earn our salvation for this reason Jesus Christ came into the world fully God and fully man 
He perfectly obeyed God's law and perfectly fulfilled God's will. He died in our place and as our substitute, paying for our sins. He rose from the dead on the third day and ascended into heaven. He will one day return to the earth to establish his kingdom. If you truly repent from sinful ways, believe and accept Jesus Christ in your heart as Lord and Savior. You will be saved from judgment and spend eternity with God. Remember, Jesus is coming soon, are you ready? Be the first to know when new videos are published. Please like and follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the notification bell beside the subscribe button to be notified of new releases. Kingdom Pattern at www.youtube.com Crossway Christian Ministries 2 at gmail.com This is Kingdom Pattern, a ministry of Crossway Christian Ministries.